Did you know that the author of Curious George, H.A. Ray, has a Wikipedia section on star charts? In 1952, he published a book called The Stars, A New Way to See Them, where he redrew constellation patterns to give more realistic depictions of what they were supposed to represent. Many of those patterns are in use today. I like his version of Capricorn, which looks like a goat balancing on a little rock. You can see it, right? Even though that's a great star pattern, I didn't use it in this video. Instead, I used the one designated by the International Astronomical Union. That pattern was a little bit trickier. It's not quite as obvious what it's supposed to be, but I can kind of see it. Let's draw upon the constellation Capricornus to learn more about the night sky. Oh, and by the way, if you like these videos, want to support me, and want to get cool merchandise, you can get these drawings as stickers to place on your water bottle, telescope, laptop, etc. Check them out on Etsy. Before we begin, I just want to point out what this constellation looks like in my photograph. There are a lot of teeny tiny little stars all over the place, but the stars we are looking for are these ones. They form a bit of a triangle shape. You'll notice here there are a couple of bright things, bright stars. This is actually Saturn and this is Jupiter, so that just is happenstance. You won't always find them there. And it also is kind of interesting. Oops. Yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like without everything cranked up. So you can see that the stars in this pattern are the brighter ones in this area. Um, there are more stars, but all these little ones you can't see as well, you know, depending on how dark it is outside. All right, let's get on to the drawing. You can see Capricornus from July all the way to November. Its early evening peak is in September, so that's an ideal time to look for it. Before then, you have to stay up later to see it. For example, I got this picture August 14th at 1.20 a.m. I didn't have to stay up that late to see it, but I was waiting for it to get higher in the sky and clear the horizon for my picture. In any case, I recommend you look south between 9 and 11 p.m. in the middle of September to spot Capricornus near its culmination, or highest point in the sky. If you're in mid-northern latitudes, like me, that's where you'll find it. But of course, the further south you are, the higher north the constellation will be. Another recommendation to help you find Capricornus would be to look for the bright teapot asterism in the constellation of Sagittarius. And then look east, about 50 degrees or so. That's the distance of your outstretched hand from pinky to thumb twice. With practice, you might be able to spot these two stars, Alpha and Beta Capricorni, as well as Delta and Gamma Capricorni. However, Capricornus is one of the fainter zodiacs, so you'll need good conditions to see it. Sometimes I have a hard time seeing the other dimmer stars in this pattern. There's a lot of mythology behind this constellation, so I'll only touch on the basics. To the Babylonians, it represented Enki, the god of water, knowledge, mischief, and a bunch of other things, depending on your source. In Latin, it means horned goat, and to the Greeks, it was sometimes identified as Pan, a god who was part person, part goat, who had goat horns and legs. He basically looks like a satyr. As the story goes, Pan saved himself from the monster Typhon by giving himself a fish's tail and diving into a river. His name inspired the Pan flute, the name of Peter Pan, and the word panic. So needless to say, you can go down a pretty deep rabbit hole studying Pan. It's pretty interesting. The brightest star in Capricornus is Delta Capricorni, also called Deneb al Gedi, which is Arabic for tail of the goat. Deneb al Gedi is an eclipsing binary star, which means the two stars are both in the same line of sight, passing in front of each other from our perspective. This causes frequent variation in brightness. This binary star is about 38 light years away from us and has an average apparent magnitude of about 2.81. Alpha Capricorni is an optical double star, meaning it's two stars, Alpha 1 Capricorni and Alpha 2 Capricorni, that look close together from our perspective, although they're almost 600 light years away from each other in reality. Alpha 1 Capricorni is a binary star, and Alpha 2 Capricorni is a triple star system, which is also named Al Gedi, Arabic for the billy goat or kid. Beta Capricorni, also known as Debe, is another multiple star system and can be resolved into two stars with binoculars. Capricornus is the smallest of the zodiacs, and there aren't many deep sky objects within its borders that are easy to see. 
The only messier object here is M30, a globular cluster about 30,000 light years away with a 7.5 visual magnitude. That's bright enough that I was able to spot this fuzzy dot through my telescope. There are some galaxy groups, such as the NGC 6907 group and the galaxy cluster HGC 87. I'm not sure where to find them, but HGC 87 looks really cool in this photo. It's about 400 million light years away and is a close grouping of three galaxies, but you'd need a lot of magnification to see them. And that's about it for now. Stick around to the end of the video to see me complete this drawing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. You can get my constellation art on Etsy. I'll put a link down below. Next time the sky is clear, take a moment to get outside and admire the stars. As always, keep learning and remember to smile.